All right, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises, glory, and honor to you. How about Shimei Shai? This is Officer Raya Abi Bangai from Sakari Seattle Set. Back with another lesson. Back with back with another Sakari Seattle classroom. All right, classes and sessions, so to speak. Now, dealing with the topic of the Day of Atonement. All right, which we're in the midst of. Which, uh, if you don't know our calendar, Sakari seventeen fifteen calendar. Um, you know, it started last night, sun, sundown. It's sundown to sundown, all right? So su last night, it sun started sundown. M Monday night, which tonight is going to end, all right? Depending on the sundown, depending on your area, all right? If you don't know don't know that, uh, go to SCAR 1715 uh, and the, dealing with the calendar. If you don't know where that is, you can Google it. But, um, you know, we're, I'm also break down you know, the understanding and aspect of the fact that we afflict our souls in the day, uh, on the day of atonement to, to atone for our sins. All right. We do this every year, every calendar year of the Hebrew uh, calendar. And we practice it to the best of our ability. No food, no water for from sundown to sundown or people like to say 24 hour, 24 hour fast or whatever. But it's sundown to sundown. Um, no food, no water. Uh you know, meditating on the laws, praying, no servile work uh, to the best of your ability. I mean, if you have to work, then you have to work uh, at your job and making money. But that and also too, and also too, uh, you know, we're we're also to treat this day as a Sabbath. All right. And, you know, the laws of, sa of the Sabbath, if you don't, then it's in the it's in you know, Deuteronomy, the fifth chapter, as well as Leviticus. OK. And that was like in Exodus, the 20th chapter. So, yeah, but also, but um, yeah, we're we're to keep this as a Sabbath. So with that said, let's bring this out. Judges 5 and 11. They that are delivered from the noise of arches in the places of drawing water. Right. So we're in the places of drawing water, which is America. All right. And it says they that are delivered from the noises of arches, which the noises of arches is the sound of those thermal, nuclear, intercontinental ballistic missiles touching this place of America, which is prophesied. All right. In second Ezra's the 14th chapter or the fifth, yeah, the 15th chapter, Salakia. All right. That's prophesied in all in also two different, in many different scriptures. All right. Um, and these missiles are going to touch ground zero on America, but the Lord is going to deliver his elect. All right. So it says they that are delivered from the noises of arches, which are the elect from the thermonuclear destruction of America in the place of the drawing waters, which is America. There shall they rehearse the righteous acts of the Lord. So in the places that we're in this captivity, the final captivity, which is the last leg of the Roman Empire, which is America. We shall rehearse the righteous acts of the Lord. And that's what we're doing right now. That's what the brothers and sisters that are in this truth faithfully are doing. And one of those is keeping the Day of Atonement, which is a mandatory high, high Holy Day, which we all try to keep the High Holy Days to the best of our ability. But this is the ma main one right here. It's like this is one of the main ones. All right. So it says. Even the righteous acts toward the inhabitants of his villages in Israel, which the righteous acts are keeping the law, statutes and commandments, which Keeping the Day of Atonement, keeping these laws, keeping these high holidays are a part of, all right? Then shall the people of the Lord go down to the gates, all right? And that's us entering back into the kingdom of heaven. So this is the, this is the uh, vision that Deborah was given to the Most High. And we know what that vision is in these last days that we're living in now. All right, so we got to show now... Knowing that we have to show our works through our, if we want to be saved up out of here and have an opportunity to be saved, we have to keep these laws to the best of our ability, man. All right. And do the most we can. Okay. Um, and this is part of it. So let me go to hit, go ahead and go to James two and 14. What profit it? I mean, it's like it. What do it that profit my brethren, though a man say he have faith and have not works. Can faith save him? If a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you say unto them, Depart in peace, be ye warm and filled, notwithstanding ye given, give them 
not those things which are needful to the body, what pro- do what they profit. Right. So someone can, you know, someone can say they have faith, but then have not works. Just like, I mean, oh, I have faith. I'm, I'm going to get some money. But if I go, don't don't go and work, work my butt off and get that to make make ends meet or whatever, then I'm just I'm sitting up here just talking. Someone can say they have faith, but you got to have works to go with it. You know what I'm saying? Just like that example that it gave you, you know, oh, I'm going to just have to be destitute of daily food, but I'm not going to I'm not going to put on clothes, not going to be able to get no food, but I'm going to have faith to get some food. Right. Nah, this is, it, life don't work like that. So verse 17, even so faith, if it have not works, is dead being alone. So, yeah, faith without works is dead being alone. All right. So someone can ha- can talk about faith all damn day, but they don't have the works. <laughs> The and the commandments of the Lord, all right, which is keeping these high holy days like the Day of Atonement, all right, then you know, all you're doing is talking, and that's what a lot of Christians do, okay. Verse 18 Yea, a man may say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works, right? So, you're gonna show your faith by your works, man. You know, and you and you have to show your faith through through uh, through the works that you have now. And even too, you can't just have you can't just uh, go through the motions and have and do the works, but then don't have faith in the most high. Because ultimately, calling upon the name of Yahweh, Wah, which is and Yahweh Shai, Yahweh Bashim Shai, the Most High through the name of the Son. All right, that's how you have faith, and that's how you that's how you that's how you operate. OK, you can't you know, what I'm saying you have to have faith to show your works. You got to show the most high that you love them through your works. All right. You know, and show your faith. So with that said, let's let's go ahead and go to. Uh, John four fourteen and 15, I'm, I'm just going through these milk scriptures right here just to give you all, uh, you know, to uh, build upon the lesson. All right. So John 14 and 15, if you love me, keep my commandments. All right. So that's this is in red letters. So this is Yahweh Shai speaking. So if you love me, keep my commandments and his commandments come from the most high. Which are the law, statutes and commandments that gave that the Lord gave to the to um, Moses now. All right. To give the Israel. So with that said, let's go ahead and go to first John two. Uh, Salakia, First John, uh, two and three, right? It says Here, hereby we do know that we know him if we keep his commandments. Verse four: He that saith I know him and keepeth not his, not his commandments is a liar, and the truth is not in him. And his commandments are these laws, man. All right, so watch this verse five: But whoso keepeth his word in him, verily is the love of God perfected. Hereby know we that we are in him okay so we show the show our faith and show our love to the most high by keeping his commandments keeping his high holy days keeping his law statutes and commandments and we and we rehearse it because we can't keep it to the best of our ability under the captivity that we're currently under all right in america which is filled which is rampant with all manners of wickedness all manners of evil all right so we try to keep it to the best of our ability. All right. Uh, so verse. So let me go to uh, John three and four, so, you know, because we can't keep these laws the way we can. If we was in the land of Israel, with our own sovereignty, our own power, we're in the captivity of our oppressors. All right. So St. John three and uh, I'm going to go down to verse 18. My little children, which are the Israelites, you so-called blacks. Hispanics and Native Americans and the Israelites scattered abroad, abroad throughout the four corners. My little children, Israel, let us not love in word, neither in tongue. Right. So don't l- let us not uh, love in in word and in tongue. Right. But in deed and in truth. All right. So deeds are works. And in truth, in the in in the truth, according to the Bible, is the word. And guess what? The law, statutes, and commandments are the word. All right. So let's look at the word deed. 
Aragon, business, employment, that which is anyone is occupied, that which is one undertakes to do, enterprise undertaking. Any product, whatever, anything accomplished by hand, art, industry, or mind. Verse 3, I mean, it's like, uh, third definition, in act, deed, thing done. The idea of working is emphasized, all right, in opportunity to that which is less than work. All right, so it's just talking about, okay, yeah, deed, doing, doing labor, work. So that's, that's the strongest definition. All right. So that's 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 showing the works, showing your faith. All right. So you all understand. All right. So uh, let's go ahead and go to let's go ahead and go into it. Because this is a very serious. Uh, see, uh, high holy day. Cause we have to keep it to the to the most of our ability. You know, what I mean, so uh, let's go ahead. Do that. So, yeah, Leviticus chapter 23, verse 28, all right? Oh, no, verse 27, my bad. Leviticus chapter 23, verse 27. Actually, I'm going to start at verse 26. The Lord, and the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Also on the tenth day of this month, there shall be a day of atonement. It shall be a holy convocation unto you and you shall afflict your souls in an offering and it's like an offering offering made by fire unto the Lord and you shall do no work in in that day for it is a day of atonement to make an, an atonement for you before the Lord your God for who for whatsoever soul it be that shall not be afflicted in that day he shall be cut off from among his people so you know we're supposed to afflict our souls, which is eating, you know, not eating, not drinking, you know, keeping, keeping it as a, a Sabbath day, you know what I'm saying? in in doing that, man. Okay. So verse, th verse, uh, verse 30 and whatsoever. So it be that doeth any work in that day, that same day, Salakia, which is the day of atonement, the same people will I destroy among his people. You shall do no work, no manner of work. It shall be a statue for forever throughout your generations and all your dwellings. And guess what? We're it said throughout your dwellings and generations. And we're in the last generation of, you know, this current rulership of, of the so-called white man. And yet the Israelites are still around. So guess what? We still have to keep it. And it should be out unto you a, a Sabbath of rest. And he shall afflict your souls in the ninth day of the month. At even, for even unto even, shall ye celebrate your Sabbath. And that's what we're doing right now, currently. So with that said, let's go ahead and go to Strong's definition. Strong's and coordinates. All right, with the flick. All right. Uh, nah. All right. Uh, nah. To be occupied, be busy, to be afflicted, oppressed, humble, be bowed down. All right. The humble oneself to be afflicted to be humble all right and like it says rather identical depressed literally figuratively all right to humble that it pretty much to mean to be humble thyself submit weaken all right hurt ravish sing all right so you know, you have some some individuals that'll try to say that all oh, this is so afflicting our souls is not talking about eating and drinking, right? You know, oh, that's not what it's talking about. It's talking about just being humble. You know what I'm saying? So this is just just to counteract anybody saying that. All right. So let's go go ahead into this precept right here. All right. It's the book of Isaiah, chapter 58. In uh, I believe verse three, yeah, verse three, verse three, verse three. All right, Isaiah fifty-eight and three. Wherefore have we fasted? Right? Say they, and thou seest not. Wherefore have we afflicted our soul, and now takest no knowledge? Behold, in the day of your fast. Ye find pleasure and exact all your labors. Behold, ye fast for strife and debate 
and to smite with the fast of wickedness. So fasting is afflicting your soul. Huh? That's what it's talking about. Fli afflicting your soul of food, water, in any form of entertainment as well. But, all, but mainly food and water. You know what I'm saying? And treating it as a, a holy day, as a Sabbath day. Behold, ye fast for strife and debate and smite with fists of wickedness. Ye shall not fast as ye do this day to make your voice to be heard on high. Is this such a fast that I have chosen a day of man to afflict his soul? Is it to bow down his head as a bulrush to spread sackcloth and ashes under him? Will thou cast, call it this a fast, an, ex an acceptable day to the Lord? Is not this fast that I have chosen to loose the bands of wickedness to undo the heavy burdens, to let the oppressed go, go free, and that you uh, break every yoke? Because that's the point of fasting, to loose all these, to uh, atone for our sins, and to lose every uh, hard burden and yoke that we've had, man, over the past year. That's why we do it every year. It's, it's supposed to be a yearly fast, all right? Verse 7, is, not, is it not to deal thy bread to the hungry, that thou bring the poor that are cast out to thy house when thou seest thee naked, thou slacket that thou cover him and that thou hide not thyself from thy own flesh. Okay. You know, and that's pretty much it though. You know, that's pretty much the precept I want to bring out to confirm that, you know what I'm saying? Because fasting afflicts, afflicting your soul is fasting, no food, no water. All right. And to treat the day as a holy day. All right. Or a high holy treat that high holy day as a Sabbath day. OK, because that's how you afflict your soul. That's laboring spiritually. OK. So just going back to Leviticus, the 23rd chapter, 23rd chapter. So you so just to, uh, hit home. Right. 23 and uh, 27, right? Also on the seventh, tenth day of his, the tenth day of this seventh month, there shall be a day of atonement and there shall be a holy convocation unto you. You shall afflict your soul and offer a offering made by fire unto the Lord. You shall do no work in that day for it is a day of atonement to make an atonement for you before the Lord your God. So the affliction is talking about not eating no drink no eating no drinking and fasting all right actually you know let, i forgot to uh bring go on the strong definition of fasting you know what i'm saying in uh isaiah 58 so go ahead and uh bring that out just real quick a slide Fast, to abstain from food. Fast. All right. You know, just to hit it all home, man. You know what I'm saying? So you can have a full understanding of it. But you know what? that? But that's pretty much it on that, man. Um, you know, Lord willing, y'all brothers and sisters was edified, man. Call law, Yahweh, Bashim, Yahweh, Shai. Rock and thigh to all you brothers and sisters and priests, prophets, and elders that are in this truth. Till next time, you know, class is now dismissed. This is Rayab Bangad. Till next time, I say Shalom.